It is funny, like every home calls for something different and it almost tells you um, with like the architecture and everything. If you just kind of listen to your house and listen to like what you really want for your home instead of thinking you need to do everything as you scroll and see in other people's homes, it's, it's wild how cozy your home can become when you do it for you, your family and the house that you're in. My name is Lisa, mother of eight and creator of the blog and YouTube channel Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. Welcome back to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. So it is November. The days are super short. This is the time of year, even though it's my birthday month, it's my daughter's birthday month, it's Thanksgiving and all of that good stuff. I have to say that November is probably one of my least favorite months. Sorry to say that too. Just because as it gets darker so early, I really, I like the light, you know, but one thing that has really helped me over these last several years as I've worked on my home and adding lighting and blankets and so many things, cozy moments by the wood stove and mantle and whatever, all of these things have helped me to, in a lot of ways, almost look forward to this time of year because I get to enjoy my home in an entirely new way. One person that's really inspired me on all of this is Liz Marie from Liz Marie blog. Uh, You probably follow her on Instagram if you're in the home decor space. She is dubbed the queen of cozy and she is launching her new cozy book today actually. So we're gonna talk about creating cozy in your home, whatever that means for you because that could be something different for everyone and how she helps people do that. So let's dive in to chat with Liz Marie Galvin. Thank you so much, Liz, for joining me. I know I had you on, was it last fall or was it the year before that? When did your last book come out before this one? Last fall. Yeah. Well, we were just cranking these okay. out. I didn't yeah. realize that was so quick. <laughs> Happy to be back. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to have you on. It's a very timely episode. Everybody's wanting to get their home cozy because it can get a little bit depressing throughout this next season as the, you know, it gets dark so early and we have to be inside a lot. For me, there's a lot of comfort in a a cozy home. Like last year, I, by the end of summer and this year too, actually looked forward to winter just for the wood stove coming on and like lighting the fire, turning on the cozy lamps. So I think it really is something to be said because I don't normally like winter in any way, shape or form. So I think it's important. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I truly am looking forward to fall and winter and cooler weather because I feel like summer is so busy, especially with kids. And so I'm kind of looking forward to hibernating indoors. So um, the book really came at a good time. I agree. Okay. So when does the book come out? It's called Create Your Own Cozy. And what is the message of the book? Obviously cozy home, but I think it goes deeper than that. Yes. So this is the third and final book in the Cozy White Cottage series. It comes out November 7th. I'm very excited about it. And this one is kind of bringing everything together. So each of the books has a hundred cozy tips inside of it that anyone can use. This one is interactive. So we still have the 100 tips, but we can use it as a journal. And I love what you said about usually not looking forward to winter, but wanting to create a home that isn't depressing and really nurtures you through that. And I love that this book is coming out at that time because it's interactive. We're going to actively make our homes and lives cozy um, to get through those winter months, but also um, create a nurturing environment for our families. And in this book, we touch on so much more than home. You know, we've said it in the other books, you know, we've said cozy is more than a throw pillow or a blanket, but this one goes into a healthy lifestyle. It goes into just creating a cozy life for you and your family that's custom to you guys. I love that. So this episode is actually going to come out on book release day. So if you're listening to this, it's November 7th or after, and the book is officially out. So when you say interactive, do you mean there's actionable steps that someone can take along with the book to bring? Sometimes it's like it's hypothetical or maybe it works for your house, but is it so that the person can actually implement some of those strategies in their own home? Yes, and interactive in the way that we actually have journaling space in the book, and you can write 
um, because we truly want you to create your own cozy. So in all the other books, you know, we have said my definition of cozy is my five senses being at peace at once. And so that's going to be very different for everybody. And I think one of the favorite comments I get on social media or about the book is that this, you know, oh, this particular thing isn't cozy to me. And it's like, yeah, that's what I, you know, I'm trying to tell you that cozy is different for everybody. And then this book will truly bring that out. We're asking questions like, write a letter to your past self, um, write a letter to your future self. And what do you love about your home right now? And what do you not love about it? So it's really diving in so that you're not just skimming the pages or looking at photos, like you're truly discovering your own cozy. Okay, so this could be a very loaded question. But what does cozy mean to you? Or what are some of the things that you get most commonly pushback on on your social channels about? Well, that's not cozy. Like, what are some examples? I I love this question. So the first thing I thought of when you said that was safety, because that's something that not everyone thinks about. And we've been through a lot of tragic things that have really had me clinging to safety. We've had a peeping Tom situation and we I've lived alone through many deployments. Just things like that have really made safety like a core value of cozy to me. Um, And it's something that not everyone thinks about. Um, But the next thing cozy to me is having this custom creative home that truly functions for our family. And it really makes people mad on the internet (laughs) when you do something that's like not every day. We got rid of our fan above our stove and I've never seen more people lose oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Same, I mean, same, same. I, I know and all I, about and that. And I constantly <laughs> have to say, um, at the time, we had 11 windows in our kitchen. And we had a grill with a very powerful fan above it that was like five feet from the stove. But I think not going with the flow because it's what you're, quote unquote, supposed to do really has made my home cozy and like letting go of caring what other people say. Of course, again, safety. So I'm not choosing things that are dangerous or, you know, not good for our family, but doing things out of the box is is really cozy to me. Yeah. One thing I get a lot of pushback on, one would be the stove fan and vent because we don't have one either. And another is we don't have a dishwasher. And I know for most people that is not cozy (laughs) because it's, you know, it, that, that to them would be a lot of extra work, but for us, it's somehow I've had a dishwasher, it's less work. So that, that would be an example of something where this is how our home functions in the space, you know, how we use our space. I'm with you. What are some examples of the safety stuff too? Like when you say that maybe you, are you talking about like curtains? Like you said, you had the the peeping Tom situation or what are some other examples? Yeah. So I'm talking, you know, we've had to implement a lot of things like an alarm system and cameras. And one big thing was we got all new windows throughout our entire home, which was a very expensive investment. But I cannot tell you, I didn't realize how Mm -hmm. different a home feels with secure, solid (laughs) windows and doors. I mean, even the way your house sounds is different. We we kind of live on a busy, even though we're on a little farm, mm. we're on a busy road. And so like even not hearing like the traffic and just, just little things like that, but definitely what functions for your family in that safety realm. So whatever you need to do, that was something that we focused on before making our house look pretty. Like windows were pretty, you know, doors, but I would have loved to paint something or, but investing that money into safety, whatever that means to your family. Yeah. You just sleep better at night, you know, whenever there's an example of that, like this is so small, but my sister sent me an article of a child that got inside one of their cedar chests and fell asleep And we have, I have one upstairs in the boys' room and it has some cracks in it. And I was like, well, it's got, you know, it's got some airflow. And I haven't slept well since that night, like since I got that text. So now I'm like, I have to get rid of it. Like now I can't sleep in this room until that very beautiful cedar box is ne- is gone. Yeah, I saw that article too. And it's life changing to read. We were actually at a flea market this weekend and I bought a trunk. And one of the things I'm going to do before putting it in the house is taking the lock off completely and making it, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I 
doing things like that so you can sleep at night. You're a better mom when you sleep at night. And so your life is cozier when implementing those things. So it's definitely functionality before beauty. And and you know that you're running this household so well and so inspiring that you probably don't use the word cozy maybe when talking about it, but you truly are creating a cozy environment with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I feel like the longer I'm in my house, the cozier it gets. I know you're also living in an old farmhouse. What kind of projects have you done and then what are you working on? I know it's a, a long process because you've been there for years. And so if we, it's not just something that happens overnight. What's going on currently? Yeah, we've done it a little backwards. Not going to lie. I really struggle with ADHD in all facets of my life and also just being a creative, I randomly will get out a paintbrush. So we've done things before, like paint our old floors that we knew we would have to replace one day and things like that. So at the moment, currently, most of our house is actually gutted. We don't really have a functioning space anywhere, um, or it will be gutted soon. So we're doing the big things right now. The the final, we know how we want to function in the house. So this is what we're doing. So before it was kind of like, let's live here for a while. Um, when we moved here, I wasn't a mom. So I really didn't mm-hmm. know how we would function with kids here. And now that I am a mom, um, we realize how we want to function. So, and what we need. And one of those things is like a play area, like a living room that maybe stays clean in a play area. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. have known that before I would have thought, you know, anything. But um, anyway, so we're kind of in the middle of those renovations and it's, it's hard to live in a reno, but it's also so good because I think when we're done and it is pretty and functioning, it's going to feel so good um, at the end. Yeah. All right. I want to take a quick break from this conversation to tell you about one of my favorite sponsors that I use all the time, and that is Azure Standard. So if you've been following along for a while, you have probably heard of Azure Standard. It works essentially like a co-op where several people get together, pool their orders so that way they can get free shipping and a discount. There are drops all throughout the country. So you don't have to organize this for yourself. There are already people who are likely going to a drop near you. So all you need to do is get on the Azure Standard website and check out where the drop is. So for me in my area, there are two different ones that I could go to within 30 minutes and it's a once a month thing. So you can place your order and then it's cool because there's a deadline for when you can order for the next pickup, but you can keep adding stuff. So what I'll do is I will order a bunch of stuff and then as I think of it, I'll get back on the website, add something. That way I at least cover my bases, I get my order placed. But then if I think of more, it's not final, which I really like because so many websites, you think of that one thing you wish you would have gotten after you place your order, but you also don't wanna forget to order. So I will place it as soon as I can and then I will jump back on and add things as I think of it. Things like my last order, I got 30 things of grass-fed butter, which I store in the freezer and just pull out as I need it. We get animal feed like oats and barley and alfalfa pellets. In the kitchen, I stock up with all-purpose flour, with einkorn flour. I do this whole grain bread flour that I like for my sourdough. You can do produce, so whenever something's in season, there's usually a discount on it. You can search through and find what is a good deal right now. There's household products. I like that it's all organic stuff, but then there's usually bulk prices and then also that co-op feeling where you're getting it more direct and so it's less expensive and you, you can find a lot of things that you maybe couldn't otherwise find, like raw cheese. So I am baking my cheese, but then also I'm also not all the time. And so you can get these big blocks of raw cheddar cheese. And I can't find that local. I usually can find just a little square of it and it's $12 for just the tiniest amount. So I get these big blocks of raw cheese. I have a few videos over my YouTube channel where I do hauls. So if you're interested in seeing what all things I pick up from Azure Standard, you could check out one of those. Azure Standard is offering Simple Farmhouse Life listeners 10% off for new customers with orders $50 or more to a drop location. So if you find your drop location and you're a new customer, 10% off with the code SIMPLEAUTUMN10. So that's a really great deal. It's a one-time use coupon per customer. 
That coupon will work through November of 2023, and it's only for first-time Azure standard customers with a minimum order of 50 or more to the drop location. Again, that code is simple autumn 10. So if you've been looking to check out Azure standard to see if they have stuff that's a good deal for you and your family, head on over to azurestandard.com and use that promo code. Okay, so you're gutting your home. I need to like catch way up on this. Are you getting new floors? Are you doing new rooms? What are you what are you working on? So one of the main things right now is I have always dreamed about having a deconstructed kitchen. That's what I call it. Um, I think a lot of people call it unfitted kitchen. Yes, Um, yes. I always use the word deconstruction like in every part of my life. But, you know, like collecting pieces, it it takes years. Or or if you're Mm -hmm. lucky, I'm sure, you know, you could do it in a shorter amount of time. But for us, it has taken seven years to collect pieces to be part of this kitchen. So I really wanted it to have that like European cottage feel and not um, like builder grade cabinets. And so one of the things that we did kind of rush was getting a kitchen and we did it on a budget because we were adopting our son and they kind of want you to have a kitchen. So that is something that we had kind of rushed before. And now I think it's been five years. We're ready to kind of get that deconstructed kitchen going. Um, We have kind of all the pieces that we've collected. And one other thing is this house is an 1800s farmhouse and it was very open concept. And we're really trying to make it cozier by adding more rooms and more walls to create their own purpose. Each room has a different purpose. Mm -hmm. Like our kitchen felt like a football field. It was so big. And I know that sounds kind of weird. It's not a complaint. It's just, I wanted something smaller and cozier Mm -hmm. um, because I don't need a very large kitchen with the way I cook. And so we actually created a sunroom and a kitchen out of one room. And um, just adding cozy walls. Another thing, we had a very big formal dining room. We didn't need that. So we cut it in half and half of it's a hallway and half of it's a butler pantry now. Oh, that's and cool. I have a massive pantry, you know, and so that worked for the family prior, but for us, it's very different. And um, I, I think not being afraid to do your own thing and make your own rules has been really fun. Yeah, it's funny because you say the big kitchen and like, oh, like almost like embarrassed to say it because people are like, wait, what? But I agree with you that really large spaces are so hard to, they're harder to decorate, in my opinion. They're harder to make cozy. That's our, our home is kind of like that. I mean, it's not massive, but it's bigger than our last house and the ceilings are really tall. And I thought I was going to come in here and paint all neutrals do no curtains, do like light and airy. And I've been here for five, almost five years. And we've basically added color to just about every room, curtains, thick, heavy, pleated drapes, because the house just demands more. You know what I mean? That's it's, it's like so much easier to do the little cottage style. I feel like it is funny. Like every home calls for something different and it almost tells you, um, with like the architecture and everything. If you just kind of listen to your house and listen to like what you really want for your home, instead of thinking you need to do everything as you scroll and see in other people's homes, it's, it's wild how cozy your home can become when you do it for you, your family and the house that you're in. Yeah. I agree. And our house had definitely some openings like yours, places where it had originally been closed off that had been opened, but not, I don't know, maybe yours was even demoed more and it's all open. Ours ours has like some spots, but almost to the point where I actually really like the more open, but not by no means is it open concept. Yeah. Ours is pretty open concept. It was, and every room was large. Like I'm actually sitting in our bedroom right now and it's so big that I, again, you feel weird saying that, but what they did to the upstairs of the farmhouse is they took five bedrooms and made it into two. Wow. And so even our bathrooms and our closets are massive and some people function very well in that. For me, I I think with my ADHD, I'm kind of an out of sight, out of mind, and I'm a shover. So I will, if you give me more closet space, I will fill it with nonsense, forget it's there And it's just a mess. So I need small, concise closets, smaller spaces. Um, It's just, and again, that's just how we function. Yeah. It's easier to decorate too, several small rooms as opposed to large ones. We, our farmhouse is kind of the same. I don't know that anybody ever really touched them. I think maybe it was just designed that way, but the upstairs, two of the rooms are so big and they're connected 
So I feel like I have to kind of make the color schemes really flow. I'm working on that now. It's a little bit tricky. Yeah. And it's, it's fun to do it over time though. Like you're doing, you know, you kind of feel like yeah. you get to know what you really want there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So tell me about a few of the pieces that you've collected for your unfitted kitchen. I'm curious, like what kind of pieces have you stored or are they in the barn or what have you, how have you brought this together over time? It's funny you say that we have, I don't even know how long the table is. It feel, felt like 11 feet and very heavy. Um, it's sitting in the middle of our front entryway and it has been for weeks. Some is in our bar, barn, some's in the garage, and then some pieces are just scattered around the house. It is funny um, sharing on social media every day. You learn what angles to show and sometimes mm-hmm. we'll show yeah. the mess if we have time. But a lot of times, you you know, you know, uh, as a busy mom, yeah. you only have a certain amount of time to share. So we're probably going to share the good things. But I have this massive, really cool counter that a friend brought over from England to their shop and it's got shelving in it and it's super long and that's going to be our counter with a sink in it. And then I really want to do um, curtains that we can pull back and have like our dishes on the shelves underneath it. And I love that again, with the way I function, I need to see everything. And so I can just see everything. It's not shoved behind a cupboard door. And another thing that I've really worked on over the past few years is buying things. Maybe it's an investment or maybe it's just like looking for not as like fast fashion home decor, but those pieces that are useful, but also pretty. So not minding that our cleaning supplies are on display because they have wooden handles on them or not minding that our dishes are on display, you know, because they were collected over time, antique finds, you know, not needing things I need to hide in a closet as much and having things that fit with our like eclectic cottage style. Oh, that's cool. I can't wait to see all of that. I really like whenever there's curtains in the kitchen. So are you not going to be doing any cabinets or just a few or shelves or is it all going to be behind the curtains? We do have some cabinets that we have collect again, antiques. We're not sure which one's going to fit right. Um, so we have like a few options. And then the thing that um, is different and unique about us, I think that makes me function well, is that we also own a store. Yes. And so whatever antiques that I'm not going to use, Um, And I know that not everyone has that we bring to the store. So we do have a Mm -hmm. few pieces kind of sitting around, you know, in limbo, ready for us to pick. So, yeah, that that is such an advantage. (laughs) But for those who don't, I you know, I you have a good eye. So I'm, I'm sure and confident you could do it either way. What are your tips for bringing a space together when you're getting all the antiques, I struggle with this. I actually have a clock sitting on the mantle that's like this way, so you can't see it. But when I bought it, it was from an antique shop, knowing full well I couldn't return it, thinking, will this look good on my mantle? And if it doesn't, I don't really have another place for it. So what are some of your tips for like collecting things together, but then not really being sure if you're wasting a hundred bucks on the antique clock or not, you know? Yeah. Prior to this, um, prior to having a store, I actually got a booth in a store for that very reason, because I should add antique collector to my business card just because it is a passion. Like I know that that's not for everybody, but it truly is. I like learning about them and meeting the people selling them. So I think without a store, I would still be doing it. And also I have a lot of success with Facebook marketplace as a buyer. So I feel like there is a huge market there. If that's something that you're willing to do or, you know, posting it on your own socials, there are always family and friends looking to purchase home decor and antiques. And so I see a lot of people do that too, like personal friends. They'll just post it onto Facebook or, you know, Instagram. And so I do feel like there's a way for everybody to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And another really good tip, which I don't follow my own advice on this is to keep measurements. So for that clock, I couldn't tell in the store and I should have known this if it was going, we have the frame TV above the mantle with the art. And I was like, is it going to overlap the the TV? And I should have had in my phone a measurement from the mantle to the top of the frame before the picture. And then another example of this is I want, I have a couple baskets under my bed for some boys clothes. And I think it'd be really cool to have every boy that's under five, have a basket that pulls out from under my bed downstairs. So that way laundry is easy, getting them ready is easy because they don't get themselves ready. 
And so yesterday, finally, I put in my phone the measurement from my floor to the, you know, bottom of the, you know, bed. So that way I can slide it underneath because so many times I'm like, this basket's really nice. I want to get it, but like, is it going to be an inch too tall? You know, so keeping like a very detailed list of measurements for literally everything that you're looking for something for in your phone would be a smart move, I think. Yeah. And it's funny you say that there's a spot in the book for those measurements And for, I do this a lot and I don't know if you do, as I'm scrolling social media, I'll also find like shops that sell antiques online or certain things like curtains or fabric. There's also a place to write down like all of these small shops, what they sell and like what you are going to be looking for there. Another thing is like lampshades and I'll just forget Mm -hmm. the shop and then they're gone. And so always, yes. And Mm -hmm. I did notice this a couple of weeks ago, I remembered to do the measurements and that flea market visit for me that week was so successful in finding stuff because mm-hmm. you don't realize how often you go, oh, I don't have the measurement and walk away when you just walked away from the exact piece that you needed, um, like doors and, uh-huh. you know, or windows and it's, it's wild. Um, you know, people can say it to you all you want, like stay organized or, you know, do this, but it's wild what actually happens when you are. So, uh, huh. Yeah. Well, in like the clock, it way overlaps the picture. And I decided that I'm okay with when I want to watch TV pulling the clock down because most of the time it's off and I have the art and the clock overlapping it. But like, I don't know if I would have purchased it. Like I, it would have been really nice to have that in there. And I think you think of measurements, like I've had in my phone, different door sizes and like different heights for uh, curtains in case I come across fabric. But like thinking about those really little things, like what's the distance from the mantle to the, I know full well, I want to decorate the mantle, but like I need the mantle with and like some various things that when I'm there and I'm trying to make this decision of will this work? And then you're going to leave and you're already there. I think that's really cool. And I like that you have like a spot to collect all this together. Cause I'm just like you, I save things on Instagram. I save it on Pinterest and then I forget where I saved it. Cause there's so many places to do it or I'll screenshot it. And that gets lost in the abyss of my photo. So Yeah. I'm glad I'm not not alone in that because I sometimes feel like it's my messy brain. But I think too, like with the book, that's where I'm coming at it. It's like, I need this too. And I think we all need it in different ways. I never want to come at um, anyone or have anyone assume that I'm coming from a place of perfection or someone that doesn't need this anymore. And I'm just like giving it to people. It's like, no, I need this too. This is, yeah. And that's why it's in these pages because like this is, I crave cozy and you know, I, I want to give that to other people too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. I'm, I'm with you. I've been decorating my home for how many years now, not just this home, but the one before. And there's still those things I run into where I'm like, oh yeah. Like, how did I not think of that and organizing it yeah. before I set out? I think maybe you head to an antique shop, not really thinking you're going to find anything, but then there's that thing. And it's like, now do I purchase this or not, or go home empty handed? And it's hard because you can't just return it. You can yeah, sell on Facebook, get a booth. What are some of your tips for art? I've noticed you've added a lot lately to your home and I'm loving adding it to mine. And I have that same self-doubt when I come across certain paintings or prints or drawings and frames and trying to figure out like what will look good and wanting to know if I should invest when I'm standing there in front of it. Do you have any tips for that? I did this yesterday. I stood in front of a painting at an antique store for like an hour because I, you find your price point and you find the price point of art. And some, if it's five dollars, it's like just grab it. You know, you'll find a just spot for try it. it. Right. But you know, there's some <laughs> art that's like more of an investment. And for me, I feel like I'm at a point right now in renovations that maybe I'm I'm not the best at this because I'm like, we'll try it. But it's if that art is speaking to me and I can't walk away, I know I'll find a spot for it. And I feel like art is the thing that I've learned that tells such a story in your home. And so it's having all of these walls to fill. For me, I kind of say that we kind of live in a cabinet of curiosities. So I feel like I'm filling every nook and that's not necessarily everyone's style. But before you go shopping, knowing what you want, are you craving simplicity and you want your walls to be empty? Then art isn't, you know, the place to start for you or the place to invest. But if you're really um, wanting more character in your home and you don't know how to add that cozy character, art is the way to go. And for me, I I ended up buying the art and it was um, this, this woman out and she was surrounded by like 
75 chickens and she was throwing food out to them. Oh yeah. I'd love that. I, and I was like, this is who I want to be. And one day I want to look at this painting and do a double take and say, is that me feeding all my 75 chickens <laughs> or not my eight that I have now? But I just feel like it spoke to me so much that I would have regretted not getting it and I will find a spot for it. And sometimes what I do too is to make that financial investment that I just made in this art and it was $50 and that was a lot for me. I just feel like it it was a pretty good size, but I feel like for art sometimes- You must have good prices. Well, like if you're like, yeah, like if you're like thrifting, (laughs) oh, I found one yesterday that was, it was a beautiful one of sheep and you know, me and sheep. And it was, I looked at the price and I read it wrong. I thought it said 32, it was definitely 3,200. So there was definitely a little barrier there. (laughs) But um, I just felt like too, you know, if I had to replace- another piece of art in the home that maybe didn't speak to me um, anymore or, you know, it didn't to me at the time that I can replace it and swap it out and sell the other one to make that money up that I just spent as well. So it's another way to not just keep spending. A lot of times when I'm redoing a space, I really look to like reducing what I don't want in there and making up that money for the new space. You know what I mean? It's another way I hear a lot about, um, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, I don't have the money for that. Like a can of paint so expensive. It's like, what is in that room that you don't love or that you feel like you have to keep? I feel like a lot of people feel once they buy it, they have to keep it. Like it's like a rule, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's, you might've made a mistake and you can admit that or your taste has changed. And I mean, I'm changing with the seasons lately. I'm really excited to have like more permanent spaces, but giving yourself permission, did you put the wrong paint color on the wall? You know, it's, it, it that's okay. You can change the paint, you know, mm-hmm. admitting that. And I, I try to do that often publicly, which um, doesn't always go well. It's not an ego booster, <laughs> you know, and some people are right. not happy yeah. with you, but uh-huh. I do feel like it helps the people that I want to help in saying, yeah, yes. I do this every day. And they're always quiet. They might not even tell you that that was helpful to them. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's never the loud ones that are encouraging you. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's it's just, you know, doing it for you again, not doing it for the comments or what you see, even me posting online. I don't have all of the answers for you. I have the questions to ask you and I have the tips to give you, but I don't have the exact answers, but I can help you get there to your version of Cozy. Yeah. And sometimes it's a process. Like I think if you would have asked me five years ago, I would have said that I wanted the empty walls. And then over time, as I've added a piece here and there, I realized that I actually really like it. Like every time I do get an art piece and I put it up or then add something above it, I always like it the more I add. I'm sure at some point that will probably like diminishing returns. Like I'll be like, uh, maybe that was too much, but I haven't gotten there yet. So far, I'm always loving the addition. It adds so much. My heart sings when I walk upstairs and see these paintings that I've added now. It it totally transforms the space and almost is like the finishing touch. Like it makes the space look complete. Even if you are going for a minimalistic look, like if you do just a mirror or some kind of like artwork, I just feel like it's this finishing touch that makes it look complete and makes you feel settled. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about natural skincare. As a lot of us are trying to clean out our houses, our diets, skincare is something that is also really important because our skin is our body's largest organ and what goes on the skin does actually make its way in and affect our health. So it's important to choose quality, but one problem I've had over the years with natural skincare companies or DIYs, I've tried making my own lip balms, face serums, cleansers. They're great, but they don't have the same effectiveness as the drugstore or the department store brands that are full of chemicals and things I don't want in my body. Tubes & Co. is an organic skincare company It's a small company that uses all natural ingredients. So for example, I have this tallow balm sitting here on my desk or my dresser, which is my desk for the day, that is made from grass-fed tallow, virgin olive oil, essential oils, and that's it. It's super luxurious on my skin. I love it during these colder months because my skin tends to dry out and look really lifeless but this product really nourishes it and brings it back to life. I also love Tubes & Co makeup. I currently have on the Tubes & Co eyebrow pencil, which is my favorite thing. 
the primer, the foundation, the mascara for a really simple, low makeup, but yet not just my bare splotchy face look. I love Tubes & Co makeup. It doesn't feel like I'm buying a healthy brand. It feels like really nice makeup that also happens to have extremely clean ingredients. You can check out Tubes & Co and use the code farmhouse for 10% off over at toopsandco.com. That's T-O-U-P-S and co. Com. Again, don't forget to use the code FARMHOUSE for 10% off your order. Okay, so that leads me to like the most common audience question, which is how can I make my home feel cozy without making it feel cluttered? That is the million dollar question. Yeah. And again, <laughs> I will say umbrella, it is different for everybody. Like we all have mm-hmm. different levels of um, clutter tolerance. Yes. I would say, again, I say I live in a cabinet of curiosity. So I have collections in every area of my home. But one thing that I always do in my collections is I go through and I truly eliminate what I don't love or need, find useful or beautiful. I don't feel tied to anything. And also when I'm collecting, I am trying to think of something, I guess, with cabbage wear. Cabbage wear is something I collect and it's dishes shaped like cabbage. One of the things I make rules for myself and I say, I'm only going to cl- collect the white cabbage wear. I'm not going to collect the green. And so it makes your collections more confined and they don't get out of control when you set boundaries and rules, or I'm only going to put the cabbage wear in this collection, in this cabinet. So when it's full, it's full. And I will say function is key over beauty. So if your collections are making you not be able to function in your space, then it's time to reevaluate or find a new home. Maybe we're going to go to the flea markets and we're going to look for a cabinet for this collection instead of having it all over your coffee table where your kids are throwing it around or Mm -hmm. you can't sit there anymore. So there has to be rules for you and how you function. And those are, again, going to look different for everybody. Yeah. For me, if it's something that's on the wall or it's curtains with a certain pattern or a rug that is a vintage or antique rug that has a lot of texture or whatever, those are all fine with me. It's like when there's piles. That's That to me feels like clutter. But adding a, bu- a bouquet of dried flowers and a piece of art and stacked books that are on a mantle and like, you know, things that have a lot of pattern and color totally feel fine as long as nobody can touch them. So that's my threshold. And and I can have a lot of all of that. But I think some people maybe don't even, you know, that might feel like clutter to them. It, it, it will depend. Yeah. And I think too, the scale of things. So I think if you have a lot of like little furniture and little pillows and little decor, mm, yeah. that can feel so cluttered. It's like, what can you make on a bigger scale? So take everything off your coffee table, all of your knickknacks, and maybe just put one big vase of florals, whether they're Mm -hmm. real or faux. And it's really like looking at your mantle. It's like, do you have a lot of little pumpkins and books and stuff? And it's like, maybe we just do a large lamp and a, you know, a little picture frame and a large um, bouquet of flowers. You know what I mean? It's like, right. What Mm -hmm. Can we eliminate that small scale? Like that's if you're feeling overwhelmed. I'm not saying little is bad, um, but if you are feeling overwhelmed, is your furniture all little? You know, we have to look at scale a lot. And I feel like that's overlooked, especially in our like fast fashion consumption that we're like all go to doing. target type of yeah yeah like, yeah when we're all going knick-knacks. to target and I'm I'm again I'm coming at you not. At the whole audience, I'm not coming from perfection. I do that too. And then once in a while, I'm like, would I have loved an antique base better than that Target base? I mean, it was accessible and easy, but would I have loved an antique one better? Or do I need all of those pillows because Liz Marie bought all those pillows? No, I probably I probably just need one or none. You know what I mean? Or, you mm-hmm. know, so it's like, it's really checking in on yourself and am I doing this for the function of my home and what I love and what my family needs or am I doing this for the gram, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Even if you're not an influencer, you still put, you know, your photos and everything on the gram or at least are influenced by it. And, And one encouragement to everyone is this is all a work in progress because a lot of the other questions say like, okay, well, what if I 
don't like any of the furniture that I have in my house? And how do I cultivate the cozy if I am on a budget? Or how can I, like the antique shops are expensive. It's probably just collecting over a long amount of time. And Liz, you've been home decor blogging for good grief. I don't even know. But you've been doing this a long time. So you've been slowly adding to your collection. And so have I. And so it does just take a while. Yeah. And one thing is the pressure of the world is constantly telling us. I mean, it started with TV shows on decor. It said, you have to get this done in 24 hours, you know, and it, you better go to the store and find everything for your home right now um, in one trip. And to go against that and to collect over time is not easy. Um, Especially, you know, if you do share on social media, but even just a consumer of social media, it's not easy because you're like, oh, well, so-and-so did it. It seems like in a week or, you know, I I get it a lot online and I have to log off because I'll see someone Mm -hmm. say, sorry, these renovations are taking a long, it's been a month. I'm like, it's been seven years. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, ah, like you kind of have to like um, really check yourself and say my timeline is custom to me and Mm -hmm. I'm not on anyone else's timeline. I did see, I thought this was really funny the other day and really made me, it's just been like thought provoking. I saw a blogger that I love um, send out a huge apology that her kitchen has taken a couple months um, since the summer. And I have had a, like a ripped up kitchen for years. And she said she got a lot of angry comments. And I thought to myself, I was like, People that follow me are very kind because I, I haven't seen anything. It might be out there, but I guess people are probably really angry and they've dipped out a long time ago because, you know, they, it was taking too long for her and they were getting very upset. And mm-hmm. it really was thought provoking. Like, what can I talk about on my platform and how can I encourage people that slow is good and and real life takes time. Like we're not, we don't come out of the womb perfect and who we're supposed to be. And I'm constantly working on myself and my home and my life and making mistakes. And so it's like giving that permission to every area of our life, you know? And I I feel like uh, with internet and curated feeds, I feel like we've gotten away from that. Yeah. It's definitely little by little bit by bit. I, I was looking at my kitchen. At one point I did like an updated kitchen reveal And since then, I've added just curtains and so many little things. I'm like, oh, I found this fabric and I found this thing. And I saw my original kitchen reveal and I was like, that is so plain. But I I just put it out there because that's all I had. And then as as time goes, I just keep finding stuff here and there, you know, like everything in my house, not everything. A lot of things are vintage, collected, found different places. And this is just, you know, I'll say share like a... um, a haul or a vintage antique haul on my channel. And that takes me six months. Every like six months, I do that video because it takes that long to find like five new pieces. But over time, you know, five pieces every six months, you know, there's, it it, it really does add up. So yeah, it's, it's not, it's, it's, we don't have crews right behind us. <laughs> Yeah, no cruise. And I, I just feel like when you have that desire for like a collected home, that's not everyone's journey. But if you have that desire for that cozy collected look, it is going to take time. And and just knowing that going into it and that it's okay. And um, I know online, it feels like you're seeing one big room reveal after another. And that's okay if that's not your journey. Um And also the internet also makes things feel like it's faster. You know, it might feel like someone did something really quick, but we weren't there for like all of the work and the hard days and the collecting and you know what I mean? So I I do. And I speak about that a lot. I think it's just on my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and even when it's not quick, there's so much going on on the internet that you might see somebody's, you know, reveal six months later and think that they just talked about it because get a lot of input these days. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it. And it's, um, we really have to tune that out and be okay with being different. I know I feel like sometimes we all start looking and acting and our homes start looking the same. And so it's like daring to be yourself in an internet world. You know what I mean? Daring to stand out. Yeah. Your home has always had a unique look to me. Like you could take any picture from any part of your home and I would know it was yours. It seems like you've really stuck true to what you like throughout a lot of the trends. Thank you. I, I am guilty of following trends sometimes. That's a huge well, yeah, compliment. I mean, but we all. <laughs> um, I did fall into that for a couple of years. I felt like I had to kind of like keep up with the Joneses, you know, 
your if your job is mostly online, you know, you felt like yeah. you needed to, but I'm becoming bolder in that. And that's another work in progress. So thank you for that compliment. Sounds like the book will help people map this all out. So tell us uh, where we can best find the book or anything else that you want to share about the book that comes out today. If you're listening to this episode, the day it airs or any day after. Yes, I am so excited about this. I'm so excited to like dive in with everyone and help you find your cozy. I feel like the interactive portions and just being able to um, talk about things from healthy lifestyle to um, like we've been talking about the whole time is like um, a lifestyle um, online, offline that really works for you and your family is it's just going to be really fun. And I'm excited to dive in. So um, yeah, let's do it together. And the book is currently on Amazon and I believe it will be in Target and all major um, retailers like that as well. So I'm just really excited. And small shops. I want to shout out the small shops. A lot of small shops have been ordering the book to be in their stores as well. And we always want to celebrate that. So if you have a favorite boutique in your area, definitely tell them about the book. We'd love to um, have it in there. That's a that's something I didn't even think about when I first I, I have one book and it's you know, it's been years since I did it. But I went around to the we have cute little shops in our area. And they wanted a stack of books and that that's just a neat partnership to set up. So yeah, there's people yeah. probably have them. So yeah, plug the book there. See if they can get some from the publisher. Yeah. And it's, it's nice to be able to send people there. We, I mean, we love, it's a compliment, you know, you're in a big retailer and we're so thankful, but I guess as a small shop owner and you know, too, it's like um, having it there and it's not easy for them. It's not as easy for small shops to get it. Um, they have to kind of, you know, they have to go request it to the publisher and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the biggest compliment of them all is a small shop wanting to carry it. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, well, it'll be linked below. Otherwise, just create your own cozy, Google it, you'll find it. Thanks so much, Liz, for sharing all of your, your journey and your queen of cozy tips. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast, and I will see you in the next one. 